Hey, folks, welcome to the show. This is Faith in Sport. I'm Dr. John Aquaviva. Thank you for joining us today here on Carolina Catholic Radio. You're also listening to us from Radio Maria. Thank you, all you folks, for joining us, however, wherever, and whenever you're listening to us. Faith in Sport, where we apply our faith to all aspects of sport. So if you're an athlete, if you're a parent, if you are administrator or referee, you're involved in sport in any way, this is the show for you. This is where we merge sport and virtue. Here's what we're going to do today, folks. We're going to discuss all things sports, including our hit or miss with Carlos Herrera. We're going to do weekend headlines, and our guest today is Dr. Dennis Golden. He's a former college football player and a former president of Fontbon University, a Catholic institution. He's also written a book. He's going to be with us in the second half of the show. I'll talk a little bit more about the book and a little bit more about our guest, Dr. Dennis Golden, as the show progresses. we got the quick Q&A with Dr. A, and then we'll do some thank yous, and the hour will uh, shut. But actually, right now, the door is just open, so let's walk through that and, and have ourselves a show. Listen, folks, before we start, I want to remind you that Faith and Sport Radio is now supported by Carolina Crawl Space Pros. Folks, living here in the Carolinas, we have a high level of humidity. Many times, a high humidity level in the crawl space can cause your beautiful hardwood floors to buckle. For details on how to get $250 off and for website and contact information, go to my page on Carolina Catholic Radio. That's Carolina Crawl Space Pros. Thank you, folks, for supporting this show. Listen, in one minute, we're going to bring in uh, Carlos Herrera, and he's going to have a discussion with us. We'll talk about hit and miss, some of the other things going on in the world of sport. I want to make a correction, first of all, from last week. I mentioned MARA, and it's an acronym for the local baseball and softball uh, fields that are near our house in which our da- daughter and son played on teams there. And I mentioned the name and I said it wrong. It's MARA stands for the Matthews Athletic and Recreation Association. So uh, my apologies, anybody who might have been offended by that. Uh, sitting in today for Chris is Brant Hart. Brant, my friend, thank you for taking this at the last second. How are you doing today? I'm doing just great, John. Uh, glad to be aboard with you and Carlos, and uh, we know that uh, we're going to have some great times today. No doubt about it. Brother, listen, I always appreciate the fact, because usually when Chris has to step away, he does it uh, within an hour or two, and you're always gracious about stepping into that role. Thank you for everything you do, and thank you for everything you do for Carolina Catholic Radio, brother. Well, you're certainly welcome, John. It's a pleasure to work with you. Very good. All right, folks, uh, we're going to bring Carlos Herrera on in a second. Um, I want to mention something that happened this past weekend. Uh, At our church, Our Lady of Grace in Lancaster, South Carolina, um, our little Abigail Rose had her first communion. And she was one of about 13 or 14 little people that got their first communion. And as I looked around the church, there was at least maybe a third of the people that I did not recognize. And and now this is not totally fair to them to even say that because we go to the same mass just about every week. And there are two masses on Saturday. There's another three on Sunday. It's quite possible since we joined there two years ago that the masses that they go to are the ones that we are never at. So that's quite possible. However, uh, Dr. or Father Kirby actually uh, corrected my uh, thought on that. Because at the end of Mass, he said to those folks, and I thought this was a great message, he not only said, folks, this isn't a one-time thing. I want you guys to come back and come back every week. And one of the things he said was, listen, you have taken your son or daughter to the world of enrichment by offering them communion. And by not bringing them back, that's like taking them into the desert without any water. He said, Christ wants to be a part of their lives. God wants to be a part of the way they think, the way they act, and and just simply be a part of their everyday life with their friends, with their family, and so forth. And if you don't bring them back, it's like putting them in the middle of the desert with nothing to drink. And I thought that was awesome. And he really challenged those people. And I love love it when, when any priest, any reverend, any pastor challenges people like that to keep coming back because it's not a one-time thing. It's something that we need to do on a regular basis. We need to pray on a daily basis. We need to go to church at least once a week. And these people have a big responsibility on their hands, and that is bringing that little tyke back to church. Thank you, Father Kirby, for saying that. And folks, 
please pray with me out there, not just for my little Abigail Rose, those other 13 first communicants, but also anybody out there who has parents who are struggling to be a part of their faith. Let God um, let God be a part of their lives. And then as a family, as mom and dad and all the kids, go back and please pray with that with me, folks. I appreciate that. All right, that's my little uh, two cents on that. Folks, you're listening to Carolina Catholic Radio. I'm Dr. John Aquaviva. I teach exercise science just down the road here at Wingate University. We do the show from Charlotte, North Carolina. And east of here, about 35 minutes, is Wingate, North Carolina. It's a Division II school in sports. We have around 3,500 students. And I do that exercise science thing there Monday through Friday. But but uh, one afternoon, I come on down here and me and Brant and Carlos or me and Chris and Carlos and whoever else joins us for the show, we just have a hoot of a time. So thank you for joining us today. Remember, this is not only on Carolina Catholic Radio, but it's also a co-production of Radio Maria. And this is Faith in Sport, where we look at sport through a Christian lens. Listen, let's bring on Carlos Herrera right now. He is a former uh, youth director. He is a certified soccer coach. And like me, he's a fan of uh, just about all sports. And he joins us just about each and every week. Uh, let's bring him on right now. Carlos Herrera, welcome back to the show, buddy. John Aquaviva, great to be back. Thanks for having me on. Brother, wasn't that a great conversation that Father Kirby had with those people at Mass this this uh, past Saturday or what? I love it. I, I love more that Abigail Rose had her first communion and a lot of those little kids. For them, they've been watching either older siblings or the sure. parents receive communion and they're just kind of, they're curious, and, you know, one of them is just the whole experience of tasting just the bread, but then starting to understand slowly as they get older of the real presence of the That's body right. of Christ, which is which is really the gift. Yeah, no, no doubt, brother. The smile on her face, and that's a great point, because she not only watches a lot of other little kids go up for communion each and every week, she's eight years old, but her nine-year-old brother and ten-year-old sister have been going up for the last two and three years, respectively, and it's great that she's a part of that community now. And I was so happy for her. She looked beautiful. All those kids were great. And in fact, even at the end of Mass, Father Kirby goes, let's give these guys a, a round of applause just for saying yes to the Lord. I, I thought that was awesome. And it was, needless to say, the highlight of my weekend, brother. Oh, it's a, it's a beautiful event. At Mass last week, Max asked me, you know, can we go up? I want, I want you know, he was asking why everybody was going up. And I was explaining to him, and he goes, I, I want some bread. <laughs> when you get a little older, yeah, that's right. It's bread, but it's the body of Christ, and you know he's three and three and a half years old. Kind of hard to explain the, the two, the real presence of Christ. No, no. You, anyway, you'll have a lot of opportunity for that, won't you, brother? Yeah. No, and I'm loving the show, I, and I'm really thankful for the show, and I hope our listeners enjoy it. We, you know, we try to do this with a little sense of humor and uh, really talk about the two things that we love, probably uh, other than our families. Uh, faith and sport. No doubt about it. I've said that a hundred times on this show and off of this show that this combines my two loves outside of my family, uh, my faith and the world of sport. And uh, I am blessed to have this opportunity. I'm so glad, buddy. A longtime friend of mine, Carlos, you join me just about each and every week. Carlos, before we get into our hit or miss of the week, you want to say something about um, our website. So we have carolinacatholicradio.org where you can check out previous shows you can check out a little information about me and so forth but between you and i we've also started something and it's kind of been more on your end tell the folks about it and so yet another way they can learn more about our show absolutely we are growing as as is in this kind of environment we're growing our internet presence we have a website where you can if you go on the website uh within the next couple of weeks you'll be able to hear any of the older shows that we have uh, we're also going to be launching our Instagram page, uh, YouTube channel, etc. So w- we're working on that. But right now, you could reach us at, and it's really simple, faith and A-N-D, sportradio.com. So it's www.faithandsportradio.com. And if you r- go out there to that web page, uh, there's an opportunity for you to reach us. You can email us there, and uh, John and I will get it into our email, and we'll be able to reply but feel free to comment on any one of our shows, any topics. If you agree, you disagree, or you'd like us to cover something, or if there's somebody that's really uh, had an impact on your lives that's related to sport and faith, uh, feel free to recommend them to us, too. We'd love to have them. Absolutely. Um, 
folks, listen, the second half of our show, we have Dr. Dennis Golden. He's a former college football player and the former president of Fontbonne University, a Catholic institution in the North. And the first question I'm going to ask him, and I'm going to set this up. I don't actually do this very often. I'm going to let loose to you folks, the listeners, on the question I'm going to ask him. And get this. This is what it is. Dr. Golden, you went from an NFL prospect who signed a contract in the NFL to play football to a university president. How did you make that leap? And he's, boy, does he have a story. I love his passion. I love his faith. And, uh, and he is a, all about what this show is about and that he's a man of faith and he's a man of the sporting world as well. So that's Dr. Dennis Golden. So stay tuned. He's going to join us at the second half of this show. Uh, Carlos, as we always do, you and I talk about something that was a highlight, a low light in the world of sport. We call it our hit or miss for the week. What do you got for us, a hit or miss? So as always, uh, mine can go either way, but on this one, uh, this is a miss, and this is sort of to keep our listeners in tune or up to date with what's happening. And again, if you feel like we're talking uh, uh, on a topic that may be a little too political on a regular basis, I think it's an important related uh, faith and sport. But basically, last year around this time, we had let listeners know that there were several high school athletes in Connecticut, female athletes, that put forth a lawsuit uh, against the, I think it's the Department of Education in Mass- in Connecticut, yep. because they were competing against two transgendered athletes. In other words, two biological males that were had changed or identified as females, had done some treatments, hormone treatments, et cetera, but they were competing against the girls. And the girls felt it was unfair. They, uh, in many cases, had lost the races to these transgendered athletes. So they put a lawsuit together last year. They it went to the courts. Uh, the U.S. District Court uh, recently ruled in the last couple of days. And, and before that, let me just say, when, when these three girls, it was really three, put this lawsuit forward, the the Department of Justice under the Trump administration supported their cause and was also supporting this particular initiative and this lawsuit that would sort of um, exclude or separate girls in high school having to compete alongside transgendered athletes, biological males, okay, who identified as women because they felt it was um, athletically unfair. And just unfortunately in the last couple of days, this lawsuit was was taken out of court, was dismissed, and primarily because the girls that had put this lawsuit forward, who were seniors at the time, had graduated from school. So right. in in law, there's this thing called, and it's really it was dismissed on a technicality, but in law, there's a term called standing. Like, do you have standing? In other words, uh, do you have merit? For bringing this case forward. And so as high school athletes, they had merit bringing this case forward. But as college students, they were no longer sort of um, uh, participating in, in, in the, uh, I guess I said, that the effect that these competing against these trans- transgender athletes was having uh, in high school because they graduated. So it was, it was just a standard dismissal. They would have lost anyway. And as everybody sort of knows, Legal cases take years Sometimes. to run their course. So yep. at some point, unless this case was, you know, ruled quickly, and they would have then done uh, whoever lost would have then submitted this to be reviewed again. So this is going to be very hard for any case like this to go forward unless it's brought through a larger organization like the Department of Justice or anything like that. So this case got kicked out, dismissed, and uh, so we're back to square one related to this topic in Connecticut, and this could have been a case that could have set some sort of standard that could uh, be used in the future. But the good news is there are a lot of other states right now individually that are putting legislative uh, laws and rules in place to eliminate the competition between transgendered and female athletes. That's right. Uh, Folks, you're listening to Carolina Catholic Radio, a co-production of Radio Maria. I'm Dr. John Aquaviva. Uh, we're talking with Carlos Herrera. We're talking about our hit or miss of the week. His miss has to do with a lawsuit that was filed in the state of Connecticut. High, two high school girls. Actually, there was four high school girls. They were biological girls, and they lost in the state championship, and as well as other regional and conference uh, competitions in track and field to two transgendered females. 
And the U.S. District Court Judge Robert Chetigny dismissed the case because he said two of the girls had graduated, uh, rendering the case moot. And of course, that didn't really make much sense to me, Carlos, because the reason that these girls filed suit was because if you finish third versus first in any state competition, anything, you're going to get more looks from college, from colleges and college coaches. And that's what part of their lawsuit was about, that these two transgender females kept them from getting the looks and wearing that crown that is a little more impressive to colleges and in particular college coaches. I thought his dismissal didn't really make any sense. And I think that's in part, or at least fully, why why yours was your miss of the week, correct? That's correct. I mean, it's a technicality. It would really happen. And, and the way they described it is it was dismissed on a technicality, which is unfortunate because yeah. this case wasn't heard in its merits. The other thing, and then to your point, if you're uh, at and I think this is really important for listeners to kind of even uh, comment on this. Go to our website at www.faithandsportradio.com. You can comment, send us an email. But if you think about it, right, there's the, the issue about how do you feel about whether a transgender athlete and competing with a woman, that's one, one particular topic. And is it fair to the, to the biologic female or fair to the, to the biological male? That's right. right. Your point, right, most of the time, if you're in the top one, two, or three uh, in a state in women's athletics, and those sort of uh, records or statistics are disseminated across the U.S., right? If you come in third and you you don't even pop up on the list of first and second, right, for a lot of colleges, and it's sure. not like they look at further information, like are they competing against transgendered or not? They just look at it as they came in third, right, unless right. they really want to unless they separate that data. And I don't think they're at a place where college athletics is separating that data. Those girls will miss out against other girls who came in first and second and are not competing against transgender athletes. Of course. I'll tell you something else, brother. When you come in first place in like a state meet in track and field, like these girls were vying for, and clearly one of them would have gotten that. Anybody who came in third would have been vaulted automatically to first. The thing that they miss out on is something that is harder to define and a lot of people don't think of, and that's the following. If you come in third, we know that there's at least two people that beat you at least on that given day. But if you come in first, the thought is no matter who went up against you that year, and in particular in that state meet, you beat them. So it's logical to assume that anybody else who would have been there that day, you would have beat them as well. That's why they're so frustrated. That's why they've been cheated out of something. Well, listen, brother, as you and I know, we could talk about this a lot, but I do want to end on this note. Uh, There are four states who have now fully banned transgender females from sports. And I think in all cases, it's middle and high school. And those states are Tennessee, Mississippi, Arkansas. And just in the last couple of days, the state of Alabama. The amazing thing is there are 30 states that have pending bills to do the same. So, We are on in a lot of states. Here in Carolina Catholic Radio, we cover parts of North and South Carolina. That's two states. But Radio Maria covers at least six states. There's Texas in there. There's Louisiana in there. There's Wisconsin in there and several other states. You check out your local government, your state government, to see if a bill is pending. And, folks, if somehow you can sign a petition, you could support this in some way, especially if you feel strongly about it. I'd be surprised if you're listening to this show listening to Catholic radio, but be surprised in particular if you're listening to this show and you're not on board with this. And of course, it's God's truth. That's ultimately what we're talking about. So pray, if nothing else, folks, that justice is done in these states and in this situation. Brother, let's shift to uh, my hit or miss of the week. And mine is a miss as well. And my miss, probably for the, about the sixth time total in a couple of years we've been doing the show, it's ESPN. And for this reason... The most watched trial of Derek Chauvin, the Minneapolis uh, police officer, the day that he was found guilty, I was watching ESPN that evening, and one of the big morning show guys came on for a at a commercial break and said, folks, the Derek Chauvin uh, case is... Uh, is in. The decision's been made. Join us tomorrow morning where we tap into the sports world and we find out what they think about it. Now, at the onset, that sounds pretty 
right? It sounds pretty natural to talk about something like this. It sounds pretty innocent to talk about something like this, but I don't trust them as far as I can throw them for this reason, brother. In other words, the next day's conversation was only going to be one-sided. They were only going to look at it from one side. They ESPN, along with all the major sports, has always taken one side, at least politically and publicly. And here's the reason I didn't trust them and I wouldn't trust them. They were to do something like this in the future. One of their ESPN personalities is a gal by the name of Sage Steele. And she is on the sidelines for basketball games. She covers in-studio basketball. She's one of their talking heads. She's a well-known figure, but she comes from a military background. And she has made it known that she has a particular stance that is not necessarily in line with a lot of the people at ESPN. And last year when they called a special in the height of this BLM and racism issue and the sports world was kind of embracing it as much as anybody, ESPN took out some time one evening during the week and had a basically a committee and a lot of the people were from ESPN. Some were former athletes and so forth. And they joined on this panel discussion. Sage Steele went to to the ESPN administrative staff and said, I would like to be a part of this committee. I'd like to be a part of this conversation. And guess what, Carlos? She was denied access to that committee. She had no part of that panel. In other words, that was a clear case of they only wanted it one-sided. Shame on ESPN and good for Sage Steele for making her um, stance known and I, I I I feel bad. I, I'm upset with ESPN, but I feel bad for them because ultimately they are not open to the truth, and and the truth is met when you hear and you can when you hear both sides, and you can ultimately make a decision based on everything you hear. Carlos, let me let me read something. I know you got something to say about this, brother, but let me oh, read, yeah. let me read something. This is from uh, the Epic Times. And this is written by a gal named Ricky Schlott. And she goes on to talk about why it is so powerfully um, harmful for, for us to have a culture of silencing the other side. And I think this is just one paragraph out of about 20 paragraphs in this article she wrote earlier this month. I'm paraphrasing here. She said, we are a tremendously diverse culture, and yet our diversity of thought is stifled. This hurts everyone. Every time someone feels pressured to self-censor, another loses the opportunity to consider an opposing viewpoint. The exchange of ideas has died and with any chance of understanding or any compromise. I thought that was well stated, brother. Go ahead. You were probably chomping at the bit there. Oh, there's so much we could dive in here. And, and you know, for a lot of our listeners, you know, this, what you just read uh, and understand how tremendously diverse we are in this society, and that if you happen to think and say the wrong thing, it could cost your job, right? Yep. And it's really, you know, when they say the cancel culture, um, it is alive and very active, and it's almost with, with a real, you know, negative, almost, uh, you know, outer-worldly negative from the perspective of, I mean, you and I have discussions. Sometimes we we have to be careful what we say because, um, I mean, I'm self-employed, right? Yep. But I have clients, right? Yep. There are clients that have very different political opinions, and quite frankly, I don't care what their political opinions are, you know, when it comes to business because we treat each other with respect. I treat sure. them. A lot of people don't even know where I stand because it's, it's what I do on my own personal time, and I just try to uh, reflect and live my life and my values. Right. Yep. But you work for a university. You you have to be careful with what you say, and it's unfortunate because if somebody doesn't like it, right, and and that's a shame, and that really is what I think people should be up in arms about. That you right. cannot express your beliefs. ESPN. When you and I were growing up, and it was the cable was just coming out. ESPN was great because all they did was talk about sports and report right. on athletes and right. scores. Now it's like they've become this behemoth of self-importance about their opinion and now they're using that to leverage uh public opinion right. and i think that it's a shame uh, along the lines of what we talked about about these lawsuits and these states that are passing these rules against 
competing against transgender athletes. They're yeah. talking about that the NCAA is going to stop hosting state championships in those states that yeah. have those laws because they want to mm. kind of, quote-unquote, uh, punish uh, those states that have those laws. And that, that is wrong. Of course. Brother, listen, as always, this was a great conversation. Thank you for your preparation. Thank you for saying yes to the show just about every week. Um, and remember, you can write uh, Carlos or I at that uh, email address we talked about. I'm at john at faithandsportradio.com, and he's at carlos at faithandsportradio.com. And, of course, go check out faithandsportradio.com where you can see more information about Carlos and I and get some old shows and so forth. You can also, of course, do that on Carolina Catholic Radio. We just want to give you guys as many outlets as possible. Brother, uh, thank you, and listen, we'll talk soon. Thanks for having me on, and just for all the listeners, just remember, uh, Jesus is a good shepherd, and uh, with Sunday's readings and even today's, and uh, he welcomes us all, so we're glad to be a part of this. So thanks again, John. Have a great week. You too, buddy. Talk soon. That's Carlos Herrera, certified soccer coach from the Northern Virginia area, longtime friend of mine, in fact, former teammate in rugby. That's how we originally met back in the 1990s. Folk, you're listening li- You're listening to Faith in Sport here on, on Carolina Catholic Radio, a co-production of Radio Maria. Um, this is where we look at sport through a Christian lens. This is something different. Uh, as far as we know, there's nobody out there doing something like this. We hope that you enjoy it. We also would love to hear from you. So please contact us through those emails that we talked about earlier. I'd love to hear from you. If nothing else, just what you think about the show, but we would also love what would you like to hear us talk about? Maybe there's something within the world of faith and sport that we miss or miss on a, even on a regular basis. Listen, let's do this, folks. We'll go to weekend headlines, then we'll go to a break. And after that, Dr. Dennis Golden is going to join us. All right, here's the weekend headlines, folks. In the PGA, Aussies Mark Leishma and Cameron Smith partnered to win the weekend's Zurich Classic. The Zurich Classic, of course, sounds like it was somewhere in Europe. It took place in New Orleans. <laughs> the tour returns to, to traditional golf with the Valspar Championship that begins later this week. In NASCAR, Brad Kosolowski takes the flag at the Geico 500. The Cup Series race at Kansas is coming up this weekend. In the NFL, everything is a buzz since this week is the week of the NFL draft. But in more fun news, Tampa Bay Bucks tight end Rob Gronkowski set a world record by catching a 600-foot pass, a ball that was dropped by a helicopter. Brant, did you see this? <laughs> There's a video of it. He's standing in the middle of a football field, and of course it's clearly staged, right? He has Teddy Bruschi, who's an ESPN personality, former uh, linebacker and teammate of his from the New England Patriots, and they're all standing behind the camera, and then the camera shows this helicopter literally two football fields up in the air, and they drop a ball, and somehow the wind doesn't take it. He moves about three feet the whole time, and can crow- Gronkowski is waiting there, the tight end, right? He's got good hands already. But that ball's got to be coming at a great rate, right? Anyway, he catches it cleanly, and from behind the camera, there was at least a couple dozen people to go celebrate with him. It was clearly, like, staged, but I thought that was pretty funny. And by the way, it breaks the Guinness World Record. So there you go. Folks, you can see that somewhere on YouTube, I'm sure. Finally, in Major League Baseball, history was made yesterday in a game between the Arizona Diamondbacks and the Atlanta Braves, where the D-backs pitcher Madison Bumgartner, North Carolina zone, won by throwing a no-hitter. But here's the corker. It won't count in the record book. New COVID rules, this and last seasons only, state that a doubleheader game is going to be seven innings, and Major League Baseball doesn't recognize a no-hitter unless it's nine innings. Isn't that interesting? By the way, Arizona shut out the Atlanta Braves in the second game as well making it the first time a team was shut out by their opponent in both games of a doubleheader since 1977. So there you have it, sports headlines that may or may not change your life. Listen, folks, as the music plays, listen, Dr. Dennis Golden, college football player and former president of Fontbonne University and author of Golden Nuggets, Wisdom from Above and Below the Heavens. He's going to join us right after the break. Stay here on Carolina Catholic Radio and Radio Maria. We'll be right back with more Faith and Sport. The Carolina Catholic Video on Demand section is now available with over 40 video segments from our 12-hour virtual conference held on September 12th. You'll find it under the On Demand tab at carolinacatholicradio.org. 
Hello, my friends. I'm Christopher Check, president of Catholic Answers, and we're excited to work alongside Carolina Catholic Radio Network. We all know that Catholic Radio is a great help to Catholics who desire a deeper understanding of their faith, but here is something you might not know. Many, many non-Catholics are brought into the church because of Catholic Radio. That makes the Carolinas where only one in 10 Christians is a Catholic, real mission territory. Let's get to work. Your listener-supported Carolina Catholic Radio Network is delivering every day the fullness of the truth, and I am looking forward to being there in May to help them with their vital ministry. I hope to see you at one of the events we are planning, and if you'd like to set up a Catholic Answers event at your parish, send a note to feedback at carolinacatholicradio.org. That's feedback at carolinacatholicradio.org. See you in May. Teachers that care, professors that care about you. Just an awesome experience all around. There's peace here. There's um, encouragement here. Faculty, everybody that works here, they really set you up for success. I don't think I have ever felt as loved and as supported and as encouraged as I have at the Abbey. There's something here that's underlying and intrinsic. There's like a spirit of love and community. And I think the spirit is God's presence here. Belmont Abbey College, a world away, but close to home. Visit us at belmontabbeycollege.edu. Hello, Carolina Catholic family. As a result of this past year's extraordinary events, tithing, donations, and monthly pledges came to a complete halt. This put us in a severe cash crunch to pay our monthly bills. The reality is that without your immediate financial support, this apostolate will cease to exist. Over the past two plus years, Carolina Catholic has expanded its local lineup with seven new programs heard every day at 5 p.m. We also feature Carolina Catholic afternoons that start with 1 p.m. Mass from St. Mark and conclude at 4 p.m. with the Clergy Corner and Homily of the Day. All programs are available as podcasts on both our website and mobile app. When last September's Eucharistic Congress was canceled, it was Carolina Catholic who stepped up with a 12-hour, six-platform virtual fall conference. Upon completion, we committed to continue operating across all six media platforms. As a 100% listener-supported 501c3 nonprofit, Carolina Catholic needs your financial support now to continue operations. Please make your pledge to donate today and pray for the success of this campaign. God bless you. Hey, folks, welcome back to the show. This is Faith in Sport. I'm Dr. John Aquaviva. You're listening to us one of two ways on Carolina Catholic Radio or Radio Maria. Either way, welcome back to the show. Thank you for listening to us today. This is Faith in Sport, where we look at sport through a Christian lens. So whether you are an athlete, whether you are a parent or a grandparent of an athlete, whether you're an administrator, a referee, a coach, this show is for you. You know, I've always said that, you know, sports sports talk on Christian or Catholic radio stations often talk to people about their faith and which I think is a good, which I think is important, gets us insight and lets us know about the fact that, you know, people that we see on TV, usually playing sport or coaching a sport, we kind of see them in a one dimensional manner that they're just an athlete or a coach. But the fact is they have a prayer life themselves. They have a, a, a life of faith and we want to hear from those people. We take our show in a slightly different angle. We try to weave character, morality, and ethics into our conversation on a regular basis. Listen, joining us in just one moment, actually one minute, I should say, is Dr. Dennis Golden. He's a former college football player and former president of Fontbonne University, Catholic institution up there in the north. And he's going to join us. He's also the author of a book, and that book is called Golden Nuggets, Wisdom from Above and Below the Heavens. And of course, it's a little play on words there, right? He's Dr. Dennis Golden, and the name of the book is Golden Nuggets. Here's one thing I want you to do while you are um, sitting back listening to this show and before Dr. Golden comes on. He's one of the few people that I think that we've ever had on that has, has his own Wikipedia page. So go check it out. 
You can read a little bit about him, what he did from the time in his personal life and his professional life from a college football player to eventually becoming a president of a Catholic university. Now, before Dr. Golden comes on, this is something that we could have talked about in that conversation with Carlos when we were talking about how politics is clearly uh, weaved itself into the world of sport in so many ways. I thought it was interesting. Last week, after LeBron James, did you hear about this, that he had made a comment that the the police officer that shot the uh, black woman who was about to stab another black woman, um, he shot her and killed her. And literally, I think it was within an hour, LeBron James tweeted, by the way, to his 50,000, no, 50 million plus followers that, quote, that guy was next. And of course, he immediately he immediately rescinded it and he put his shoe in his mouth, needless to say. But interestingly, a Cincinnati sports bar where the owner is really tired of people like LeBron speaking out of turn, even when he speaks in turn, he just doesn't want to hear what he has to say. He will not show, this is a sports bar, he will not show any more NBA games until LeBron James is expelled from the league. <laughs> I think he is going to retire before he gets expelled. Don't you think, Brant? <laughs> Brant, listen, brother, I want to thank you again uh, here on the show while we're running. Um, thank you for joining us as the producer today. Chris is out. At the last minute, you stepped in. And, brother, I want to thank you for all your help, not only just with this show, with Carolina Catholic Radio. All right, listen, let's bring on our guest. I've been looking forward to having this guy. I met Dr. Golden and his son, Patrick. Um, at the men's conference, I told you folks last month I had the opportunity to uh, be the MC, the Master of Ceremonies at the men's conference here in the Diocese of Charlotte. And I met a lot of guys. I met a lot of faithful people. And two of the guys I met were Pat Golden and his dad, Dr. Dennis Golden. And from that, here's an appearance on the show. He's with us now. Dr. Dennis Golden, welcome to Faith and Sport. Thank you, John. It's an honor and a pleasure to join you. I appreciate that, brother. Um, listen, it's an honor for me to have you on the program. Thank you for taking time out. So, listen, I mentioned, I teased the audience with this question that actually you came up with in the in the interview, in the pre-interview for this show, and that is you went from an NFL prospect to a university president. How did that happen? <laughs> well, that's a good question. I think it was really the Holy Spirit, when I look back on it, and I'm serious about that. No doubt. I was 1963, drafted by the Dallas Cowboys. I signed a contract uh, with Gil Brandt and Tex Schramm, mm -hmm. not in person, but they, those were the, organi uh, the organizational leaders. Yep. I was in the NROT at Holy Cross College, and I decided um, upon graduation that I was going to serve the country as a Marine Corps officer rather than going to play professional football. I was 21 when I signed the contract. While I was in the armed forces, I played armed forces sports, played football. We won the national championship in 1963. Uh, there were no sports in 65 because of the Vietnam crisis. Hmm. In 66, I was getting ready to either uh, go over to Vietnam, join the FBI, or give one more try at professional football which I did. I signed a contract with the then Boston Patriots. I went through the uh, preseason, was the last one cut. Um, they brought a great uh, player in, uh, Les St. Kayat from the Philadelphia Eagles, and I became expendable because I was a rookie. I was 24 years old. Sure. So what happened next, I was driving down to New York City to see my beloved wife and our son Patrick, who you mentioned earlier, who was less than two years old at that time. Sure. Andy Robicelli of the New York Giants. He offered me a tryout. I tried out, had a very successful tryout. I was offered a contract. But on the way down from Boston to New York City, I had stopped at my alma mater, which is the College of the Holy Cross. I was offered a job as an assistant to the dean of men, and then I took that alternative to thought and prayer and discernment. And I decided that I was going to start a career in higher education, administration, rather than play professional football. That's how it happened. Now, looking back on that, even even in the years that passed that, Dr. Golden, or maybe even over the last 10 or 15 years, has there any been any regret? No, not regret. I love the sport. We are, our, 
My second son is a high school uh, athletic director at a Catholic high school up in Massachusetts. He's also the head football coach. I love the sport. And sure. in my 20s, I'd be watching former teammates playing on television, so on and so forth. But the key to that uh, anxiety was uh, Coach Robustelli, because when I told Andy I was going to take the job in administration, he said, how old are you? I said, 24. He said, 24, and you're making a career decision. He said, don't look back. Very good. Most professional players go three to five, maybe six years, and they don't have a career ahead of them. And he said, you're picking a career at 24 years of age. Go for it. So once I got Andy Robustelli's thoughts, I never looked back. Awesome. Folks, you're listening to Faith and Sport here on Carolina Catholic Radio, a co-production of Radio Maria. I'm Dr. John Aquaviva. We're talking with Dr. Dennis Golden. He's a former college football player, once signed two contracts to play in the NFL. He's a former president of Fontbonne University, a Catholic institution. He's also the author of Golden Nuggets, Wisdom from Above and Below the Heavens. Uh, Dennis, so you eventually worked up your way to become a president of a Catholic institution, this in particular, Fontbonne University. And when you and I had lunch a couple weeks ago, you and I were in dispute about how many schools, how many Catholic institutions there are are at at the um, college level. And I guessed in the 130 range, and I think you said there was about 230, about 100 more than that. And I think the number that I came up with was somewhere in between. I think there's like 190 plus Catholic institutions Either way, um, a lot of those, like Fontbonne, we don't know actually by the name of the institution. But what I'm interested in is is seeing those Catholic institutions get a stronger Catholic and Christian identity. What what did you do? What can a president, a current president of a Catholic institution, do to improve the Catholic identity of that institution? Whoever the president is, whoever she or he is, has to be aware of the zeitgeist, the spirit of the times. The spirit of the times was pointed out in 1974 by Bishop Fulton J. Shan when he said the era of Christendom is dead, but Christianity is not dead. And in 1990, uh, Pope John Paul II issued a document, papal document, Ex Corde Ecclesiae, an application to the United States of America, I was not yet a university president at that time. I was inaugurated in 1995, but I was aware of the documentation. And the whole point of it was that to say that, among other things, reason and faith are not a priori incompatible. As a matter of fact, if you have reason and faith working for you on a college or university campus, that's a powerful combination. I also looked at documentation from Blessed Basil Moreau, who 200 years ago with the Congregation of Holy Cross Order talked about helping to bring young people to completeness. And in order to do that, you have to educate their minds and hearts. Um, Matthew Kelly, more recently, uh, the famous writer, uh, presenter, talks about becoming the best version of one's self. So all Excuse me. All these things work together to a greater good. Now, the pragmatic answer to your question is anyone who is a Catholic college or university president has to work on the following things, on the mission statement, the vision, the commitments of the institution, and a very clear explication of the Catholic identity of the institution. What's happening with the advancement of secularism, a certain number of those schools are moving to a a position of saying, we're in the Catholic tradition. We're in the Catholic tradition. I'm not interested in being in the Catholic tradition. I'm interested in being a definitively proclaimed Catholic university. When I was at Fontbonne University, that's exactly what we did. I'll read you one sentence here. Go ahead. This is under Catholic identity. Fontbonne affirms its identity as a Catholic university sponsored by the Sisters of St. Joseph of Carondelet in the Judeo-Christian tradition. Catholic means universal and throughout the whole. The desire for greater understanding of creation and its creator is one of the most profound expressions of human dignity. We should be witnesses in the transformation to get us to that point. And the world of 
began with the resurrection continues in enlivening humanity, and I believe it continues in the spirit of the development of one's intellect, one's mind, one's heart, one's soul, in other words, holistic education. And I read recently with his three C's that are being severely attacked, Christianity, our Constitution, and capitalism. Yeah. And if I wanted to hurt the United States of America, I'd go after those three as well. Interesting. So more now, more than ever before, Absolutely. presidents and boards of trustees at Catholic colleges and universities need to be on alert and ready to deal with it. And I will say that I know Belmont Abbey quite well. I knew it from a distance. I know it more closely now. Yeah. Abbot Soleri and Bill Thierfelder, their president, yep. do a phenomenal job at the Abbey doing exactly what I'm talking about. Folks, you're listening to Faith in Sport, and uh, we're talking with Dr. Dennis Golden, a former college football player, former president of a Catholic university, Fontbon University, and the author of Golden Nuggets, Wisdom from Above and Below the Heavens. Now, uh, one of the things I've heard a uh, the president of a Catholic institution say is that at the heart of making their identity known is being conscientious in the hiring of the faculty. Would you say, would you agree with that person that that's at the heart of maintaining the Catholic identity? Absolutely. Um, and that does not mean that every faculty member has to be a, pro, uh, a professed Catholic. Yeah. It means that when I review people, I would explain to them the purposefulness of Pompon University, that we are definitively Catholic, and we had men and women of different faiths on yeah, the campus. Of course. But they had to acknowledge and understand that that's who we were. And if they wanted to be in that environment, and they were a good physicist, a good poet, yep. a good political scientist, whatever it may be, there was nothing to hold them back. Yeah. But by the same token, we would look for men and women of the Catholic faith uh, for those positions as well. There's no question about it. At the at the heart, uh, you were there for how many years as the president, Fontbonne, uh, doctor? Just short of 20 years. Okay, in those 20 years, and, and I know that you don't have the data right in front of you, but if you had to guess, people that were faithful Catholics uh, of full-time faculty, what was probably the highest percentage that you experienced in your tenure there? I'm really, I, I really have not thought that number through, to hmm. be very honest with you. Got it. What I will say is, though, that in our religion department, in keeping with ex corde ecclesiae, anyone who was Catholic had to get a mandatum from the uh, from the archbishop to teach. That's part of ex corde. Interesting. Uh, and we had we had men and women of the Catholic faith. I'm sure in almost every department of the school. Yeah. But I don't know the number, and I would hesitate to give a percentage. Not because I'm avoiding your question. Yeah. Forthright with you. Well, uh, listen, I teach exercise science, as you know, at Wingate University, and I looked up Fontbonne University, and that's one of the programs they don't offer. So as the emeritus president, president emeritus, I want you to contact those folks and get that exercise science program you know, uh, started as soon as possible. <laughs> so it's a phenomenal place, okay? It gets banged a little bit in the newspapers now and then, but I'm telling you, the people out there in the Midwest and the Show Me State of the greatest people that you can imagine. They That's will. awesome. Listen, I, I mentioned, Dr. Golden, a couple times your book, Golden Nuggets, Wisdom from Above and Below the Heavens. A lot of people think about writing a book. You put pen to paper. What was the purpose of writing this book, Golden Nuggets? Well, I think that uh, this is a, um, a comment within my family circle now. That was the first evidence that I ever gave them when I retired in 2014 we moved here permanently to Huntersville, North Carolina, that I absolutely failed retirement, okay? <laughs> <laughs> because I worked on that book from the first month I got here. Why did I do it, John? Because um, that's what I mean by the spirit moving me. People have said to me decade after decade, Denny, you have to write these things down and share them with people. You've had so many experiences, yeah. sports the military, international travel, being a football coach, trying out for the pros, uh, working at the Nativity Mission Center with the urban poor before you went on active duty. It went on and on. Um, 
plus the things in the early part of the book when I was a kid and was very truthful about in the book, which I wish I hadn't done, but but I did them, and they're in yeah. there. Yeah. Um, so it was more an expression of honesty and humility um, and factuality, uh, you know, just who I was and who I am as a person. And I wanted it to be a spiritual book. So every chapter in the book, and they're not long chapters, um, three and four pages at the most, actually, they have Bible passages in them, and then a comment from me, which is the golden nugget to go with the Bible passage. And someone said to me, well, you have the Bible passages in there, Denny. Why didn't you write them out? I said, because someone who has a thirst to deepen their faith, they'll look them up in the Bible, and they'll remember them better than if I write them out. The reason I wrote the book is on the last page, the last paragraph, I think it's the last sentence. It goes like this. If this uh, book helps just one pilgrim, one pilgrim, on their faith or life journey, I rejoice. I want nothing more than that to happen. And if it happens more than that, so be it. But that's the purpose of writing the book. No, God bless you, brother, and thank you for writing that. In fact, I would argue, Dr. Golden, that you did not fail in retirement. You very much succeeded. That's what you do with with retirement. You're not forced to, you know, sit on your recliner and, you know, with bonbons and, uh, you know, watch as many sports programs as you can. You did something. You gave back to the Catholic community, you gave back to the sports community, you gave back to the community as a whole by writing down these uh, lessons learned in life. And I will say this, folks, uh, consider getting this book because if nothing else, it's a good, easy read and you'll fly right through it. Uh, I enjoyed it. And doctor, I thank you for, for writing that book. And I thank you for all your service to Catholic education and I'm going to ask that our audience pray for you and your family. Thank you for joining us us on Faith and Sport. Thank you, John. I you, appreciate it. God bless your audience and everyone whose lives you touch through this program. I appreciate it, Doc. There you go, well, folks. Uh, Dr. Dennis Golden, college football player and former president of Fontbonne University. Uh, he's the author of Golden Nuggets, Wisdom from Above and Below the Heavens. You can find that book at anywhere you find books, mainly through Amazon. I'm pretty much think that if a book's been written and certainly if it's in print, my guess is 98 to 99% of all of them can be found via Amazon. Brent, did you know though, that if it contains a certain message, some of them about Christianity and Catholicism specifically, Amazon has banned from their list. Well, I certainly wouldn't be surprised about that. Oh my gosh. It's just, it's just a shame. But anyway, my my thinking is Dr. Golden's book has not been banned, so you can get that. Listen, before we move on to our quick Q&A with Dr. Ray, I want to let you folks know that Faith in Sport Radio is now supported by Carolina Crawl Space Pros. Folks, did you know that insects are drawn to moisture? Moist wood is easier for insects like, like termites to bore through. Just like water, they go to the easiest path of resistance. Dry your home with Carolina Crawl Space Pro System and protect the health of your home. So be sure to go to our website on how to get a $250 uh, savings and more information about Jeff Wolf, the owner of Carolina Crawl Space Pros, and the guys can all come out to do a free estimate. And you can find that information at carolinacatholicradio.org. That's Carolina Crawl Space Pros. Listen, brother, we got a couple more minutes. Let's do our quick Q&A with Dr. A. You have one question for me. Shoot it at me. Okay, Dr. A, do you think that the college football playoff will move to 16 teams? Now, just to clarify, the college football playoff is currently at four teams. They've been doing this for about eight years now. And here's the reason they're doing it. You may have heard this. I didn't even realize this, Brant, until just a couple days ago. There's been 21 games played in the college football playoff. 17 of them have been won by Clemson, Ohio State, or Alabama. All but four by three teams. So what, what they want to do is they want to open this up to the possibility of other people may win, right? But here's the problem. These guys will probably just get more wins along the way. If they go to eight teams or 12 teams or 16 teams, it probably just means they're going to win three or four games to get to the championship rather than one or two. And I think they're going to do it because whenever committees like this float this idea, it usually means they're seeing where everybody's 
right, where everybody's feelings are about it. And, of course, what are most people going to say about this, Brent? Stay at 14 or go to 16? Well, we do know that uh, in Division uh the other division, one that's yeah, the subdivision. Notable, that's right. Uh, Appalachian State used to be in that, and they did win about three or four, or five games to get to the championship of that particular division. So I think it's a case of that it's worked for the smaller schools. So, so therefore, it can work for Division One. And right. here's why. Here's why I think it's going to happen is because you're a UNC guy. Right. I'm a Michigan guy. They've never neither one of those teams have been in the playoff. Neither have so many teams in Division One football been in the playoff. This is going to do two things. It's going to give a better opportunity for a, a, another team to win the championship. But the other thing is, Brant, we can't deny it's going to be a whole lot more money coming in. These are going to be big televised games. So we'll just see what happens. Okay, folks. Listen before we go. Um, I, I want to give thanks to. Uh, Carlos Herrera, Dr. Dennis Golden. I want to thank Brant for sitting in for Chris today. Uh, And remember, John Paul II said, give thanks to God for the gift of sport in which the human person exercises his body, intellect, and will. Recognize these abilities as so many gifts of his creator. And uh, I want to thank those guys for joining me on the show today. I'm Dr. John Aquaviva. Please join us next time here on Carolina Catholic Radio and Radio Maria for more faith and sport.